Kamusta na kayo? Hola, hola, everyone. Yo, welcome to uh, the Mexipino podcast, everybody. Ooh, episode six? Something like that. Six, right? I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's six. It's something like that. You know, when I do the Nico Blitz podcast, I'm always like, episode... We're somewhere in the teens, but we're here. <laughs> but so, but I think we are on episode six, I'm, though. I'm pretty sure that's where we left off. I mean, it's been a while. So, hello, everyone. Yes. How are you guys? How is everyone? You know, uh, that's why we always open up with Kamusta na Kayo. Kamusta ma- ka- what? Kamusta na Kayo. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I'm stumbling on my words right now is because I made this bomb ass, like, Alfredo. Uh, fo- Falafel? Falafel? No, that's not what Farafel? he made at all. That's it was actually, like a pasta. That's not actually what he made at all. He made um, pasta with, it's an Alfredo sauce, right? You used Alfredo yeah. sauce, and then you had some ground beef in there. But normally, Nico just likes to make red, like red spaghetti, you know, the typical spaghetti. And today, he mixed it up a little bit. It was really good. He even added some sriracha. It was spicy, and I really liked it. So yeah, it was really good. Compliments to the chef. And for the record, I did not make Filipino spaghetti. For everybody who is wondering uh, yes, what Filipino spaghetti is, first of all, it is fire, but you use, like, banana ketchup, and then you also <laughs> chop up some, like, little hot dogs, preferably Vienna sausage. I, until I met you, I never knew that there was Filipino spaghetti and particular spaghetti that you make with banana ketchup. Oh, and also a lot of sugar and, and a lot of yeah. sugar. And so, I I mean, the only Filipino spaghetti I've had was from Jollibee <laughs> because that's what, you, <laughs> what we bought one time. And you're like, you have to try the spaghetti. And I was like, okay. yeah, you, I mean, you know what? When I do go to Jollibee, for people who don't know what Jollibee is, because maybe you just don't know and it's OK, <laughs> like Jollibee is basically the biggest um, fast food chain from the Philippines. Would that- you say it's like KFC for the Philippines? I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it would be like the KFC of the Philippines. I mean, you basically get your chicken, but then you get the Filipino spaghetti, and then you can also have like rice plates. It's not necessarily like the KFC. Mm -hmm. It's like a super Filipino version of, yeah. And then there's KFC, mango, mango pies, right? Yeah, mango peach pie. Um, You can also get some like ube some hollow hollow. It's like a super Filipino ass place. I still have never had hollow hollow. And I'm kind of skeptical to try hollow hollow only because you've told me that there's beans in it. See, so the thing about hollow hollow is, and I don't know why Filipinos do this, but <laughs> why do we put beans in a drink? Like it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't taste good yeah, at all. See, when you, when you, advertise it like that it makes me be like uh maybe i don't want to try hollow no you don't i mean try it without the beans because i promise you hollow hollow with the beans is freaking disgusting okay so is it hollow hollow is it technically hollow hollow if you don't have the beans yeah for just what for makes some it reason hollow though i'm uh, so I, I guess what makes it hollow hollow is the fact that like it's there's ube uh-huh which is a purple uh yam, yam. extract um, you put some ice cream in it. You could put like ube ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Okay. And then there's like these little, you could put like lychee uh, jelly in it. Okay. You could put like this string. The string is pretty cool. And I mean, that's kind of just what makes. So hollow, hollow literally just means mix, mix. Oh, see, I thought hollow, hollow was like an ingredient in it. No, 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 oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Hollow, hollow literally just means mix, mix. I mean, you could literally like. Put hella food together and call it hollow hollow, right? But then the st- the name of the beverage or the uh you know the dessert just adopted hollow hollow, despite uh, the fact that it just means mix 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 mix. Okay, yeah. that makes much more sense now. So yeah. well, maybe I should try. Try yeah, it's hollow. it's a it's a mixture of a whole bunch of things. But maybe just without the beans. So I mean, okay, let me kind of put it to you this way: for let's say our like uh. Latino, Latina, Latinx listeners, right? <laughs> it would, I guess it would kind of be like a, um, oh my goodness. What's that drink that I like with the cinnamon? Horchata. Uh, it would be like a horchata with like one of those uh, those sugar straws and then adding beans in it. Sugar Just hella straws. shit. straws. You know those sugar straws with like the swirl with the chocolate and all that? That's actually a cinnamon stick, babe. 
OK， 好、oh, no, <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> ，What we put in our chat the cinnamon stick. That's what I'm saying. He thought it was a sugar stick. Nah, but you know, you, it is what it is. Hold on, let me let me adjust this camera because Jackie's looking crazy right now. I'm like hella zoomed, zoomed in. OK, there it goes. There, see. So how's everybody? See now, now we Gucci. Now okay, we Gucci. yeah, that's much better. I was like, they were up close and personal, looking at like. My makeup cracking and shit. Nah, you're good, babe. You are good. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the hollow hollow. I don't know what it is about the beans in the hollow hollow. It's just, it's 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 like is it like pinto beans? See, the thing is, it's just like I had it once, and I'm just like, this is not it. It's kind of like you don't need to add beans to this, like because yeah, yeah. when Cause I add- it, it already seems like there's a lot going on in it already, and it seems like it's a lot of like you know sugary like dessert stuff, and I just can't wrap my head around beans being in a part of a drink. Part of a drink, exactly. That's why it just <laughs> doesn't make sense. I mean, shout out to the people who do like beans in their hollow hollow. Like you are a uh, rare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee you, you ask like any average Filipino, they'd just be like, yeah, I don't really, I don't really like. So the then why it. is it even a thing for them to be in there if most Filipinos don't like it? Look, the thing is, I mean, I'll eat damn near anything. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for other Filipinos, but I'll eat damn near anything. You, you just mix a whole bunch of shit in a plate. And as long as it's like, it tastes good, it's like, I, right, I'm cool with it. You know what? Strangely enough, a lot of, I, I have come across at least, uh, Quite a bit of Mexicans who don't like Jamaica, which is the red drink. You, you know, mean the- Jamaica. Oh my god! I'm okay. just to- I'm totally kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> but I've come across Mexicans who don't like Jamaica because it's too sweet or too sugary, and it's just like okay, like all right. I love it. No, I love it too. It's it's a really good drink. Yeah, but my brother doesn't really like it. I know he's like one that's like sticks out to me that like he does not like it because he always he's like it looks like blood i'm like dog chill okay it doesn't look like blood i mean it's like a dark reddit i mean it damn near looks like wine it doesn't look like blood <laughs> no but then my mom and i we love jamaica yeah yeah but so we have like jamaica and horchata that those are our like drinks see whenever we're at your family parties i don't normally see the horchata like i normally see the jamaica because i think i don't know that's a like I think when we have like a taco, like a taco vendor there, and they like offer to bring refreshments, we'll say like okay to both of them. But it's easy. I don't know if it's easier to make the jamaica than it is the horchata. I mean, I, I would assume. I don't know. I actually have. I have to ask my mom because usually she's the one that makes it. And like honestly, my mom can make both horchata and jamaica, and it's really really good. But well, I don't think that it takes that much effort in either one. Well, let me see. What is horchata made of? It's so, it's rice and cinnamon and obviously water and I So can't. it says, and this is just from what Google is saying, horchata is a traditional Mexican drink made up of white rice soaked in water. Mm-hmm. It's flavored with cinnamon and it's sweetened with uh, granulated sugar. First of all, I don't even know what the hell granulated means. Maybe just grainy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is minced up together in a blender and later strained to remove solids. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it does. Because like, like it said, like you have to put it after you blend it. You have to put it in a strainer and you kind of like hit the strainer and like until like it's all actual liquid and nothing is solid. Yeah, because you got to keep on breaking it down, yeah. right? You have uh, to break it down so much so that way it's just like, and that's why even sometimes at the bottom of like the horchata, like whatever if it's in like a a jug or whatever you'll see that some of the powder at the, stuff. yeah there's hollow powder at the bottom because it's either the cinnamon or just like it's hella sugar yeah hella sugar yeah. so well yeah. so this is also what google's saying jamaica is made from dried hibiscus flowers yeah and that's it <laughs> <laughs> and that i think you just i, I want to say you maybe you just boil it but i'm not sure don't quote me on that clearly i've never <laughs> made or chat that i mean or. i guess all you got to do is just liquefy the uh the hibiscus the flower. hibiscus that's it yeah. i mean that the seems hibiscus. a lot more simpler yeah it, it is a lot more simple and i think that's probably why too because and then like i mean i think my family like we prefer because sometimes there's orchatas that just are like they almost taste powdery and it then just ruins it it just ruins the food okay so final question jamaica or orchata yeah, I'm going to go with Jamaica. Yeah, that's my, like, a whole taco plate. 
all the work, cilantro, onion, salsa, everything, and grilled onions, and then a big, large jamaica on the side. Yeah. Dang. I, I could see that. I could see that. Now I got to go to taco truck on Friday. Uh, well, we're filming on a Wednesday, so Tuesday already passed. I got to wait a couple days. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of mandatory to get a taco on Taco Tuesday. Like, oh, my God. That's no, such I, mean, like, I think that's such an Americanized <laughs> thing that it's like, oh, Taco Tuesday. Like, we're going to have $1 taco. And it's like, bro, your tacos uh, are shit. That's why you're having $1 oh taco God. Tuesdays. Like, that's such an Americanized thing, I think. I I it, I don't it's it's fucking dumb. Well, first of all, I don't even like one dollar tacos because they are okay. Trash. But you're gonna tell me one dollar. You literally just said one dollar tacos. I know I said tacos. that, but like you, I feel like you would go to the one dollar taco spot. Sometimes. If I'm hungry like, as hell, but if if the taco's like a dollar like twenty five, a dollar fifty, then the taco better be <laughs> fire. You know, I miss the days when I was young and. The taco trucks, the tacos were like 50 cents, 25 cents. I remember every Friday my parents and I would go to a taco truck near our house and the tacos were 25 to 50 cents. Oh my God, that was so good. And now it's like a dollar seventy five. I'm like, dog, excuse me? And this is the same taco truck? Yeah, that's why like we ended up moving to a different taco truck. That The new taco trucks, the homie. Damn. You know, so tacos on Atlantic Boulevard. See, see, yeah. you know what's you, you crazy? Know you know. <laughs> <laughs> what's crazy? Excuse me. What's crazy is that if the opportunity came and there was like a twenty-five cent taco at a taco truck, I would literally look at it and be like, "This shit must be shit." No, but see, here's the thing, babe. You're used to like, like I don't know. You're used to like the Bay Area Mexican food, and I think SoCal, especially East Los Mexican food uncomparable to bay area mexican food we have like we got the real shit over here nico first of all let me first i'm gonna say and he knows what i'm gonna say he always like makes a joke he's like chipotle oh authentic mexican food <laughs> i'm all like don't you dare say that anymore you are dating a mexican don't you dare say that chipotle is authentic mexican food first of all since chipotle says authentic mexican grill <laughs> on their uh, slogan, that is Babe, what I believe. It's not. It really is. Not. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally fucking kidding. No, nah, but I mean, I will say this: living in SoCal for oh my god, for like eight years now. Jesus Christ, you've lived here eight years now. Yeah, it's been eight years now. 2014. Well, wasn't 2014 like, August. Wasn't it just like six years ago last year? I what the f what the hell? No, do I the math. It was like, Okay, <laughs> you know what? Nico's been hella aggressive with me today, and he's been oh, like, yeah, "No, you have not in that way. You have <laughs> not been like that with me in that way." But anyway, today I w he told me he's all like, "Babe, can you go set up the like the podcast stuff, like the setup?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." So I come in here, I turn on the the cameras. This man left the cameras on, so the batteries are dead. So I put, I replaced I'm the batteries. Sick. I turned on. I set up the cameras. I you know turned on the roadcaster. I turned on everything. I turned on even the screen, the lights, everything. And I'm sitting in his chair because I want to test out the the switcher, the camera switcher, because I want to see what I'm gonna look like. <laughs> and then he goes, he comes in, he goes, "You're on the other side," <laughs> and I'm like. Okay, I was just setting up like you asked me, and he tried giving me a kiss. I was like, "No, get away from me." I got the kiss though. Yeah, you did, but whatever. <laughs> Where were we? See, you hella diverted the conversation. Nobody want to hear about the road. About caster. the eight years, about the eight years that you were here and living in SoCal, you will say that. Mexican okay, so for better. okay, so forget about the roadcaster. All that, <laughs> ain't nobody care about the roadcaster and all that. Sorry. But. So living in SoCal for eight years now, I will say that SoCal has way better Mexican food than in the Bay. Yeah. Can we get a round of applause for that? Woo! It's a fact. It is a fact. Period. It's a fact. I've, I've tried a lot of Mexican food and like it doesn't beat SoCal. Any, I mean, any, any food truck on Whittier Boulevard, Avenue 26, you know everything. East Los runs deep with the Mexican food, obviously. It's so good. Yeah. And you know that. 
And I'm talking about going to the taco trucks or, you know, just going to the, uh, you know, the ones that you just kind of see outside. Not like the, not the gentrified stores where they sell like jumbo shrimp tacos with freaking like, I don't know, like mayo and all that shit. Like, no, just like a regular, I'm I'm talking about a regular ass like taco that you can just get from a truck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think I remember one time, the first time I got like hip to all of it was a, I believe it was Avenue 26. It was like this taco truck on Avenue 26 over <laughs> here in LA. And uh, my boy DJ Estradation, he took me. He was like, bro, like this place is open from like 10 o'clock at night to like six o'clock in the morning. So we got to go now. And I'm like, all right, bet. And then as soon as I had it, I was like, oh my God. I remember, like, yeah. This is crazy. Like I haven't had a taco like this at before ever. Like it's nuts. <laughs> yeah. And so, and then like Avenue 26 has just moved recently. So they like started their own, their own, um, kind of night market because yeah. all the vendors actually got kicked out of Av- Avenue 26 because mm. the city kicked them out. And so as a, like, you know what, whatever, we're just going to create our own night market. And now it's even more booming. There's more vendors and it's, it's really crazy. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to the street vendors. Yeah, shout out to the street vendors for uh unionizing. Is that the word? Yeah. <laughs> uniting. Uniting. <laughs> uniting. <laughs> unionizing. Union. Well, because they've cr- they essentially created a union and they were just like, hey, I mean, I don't know if they're like in a union, but like <laughs> I doubt it. Man. But I'm saying like they basically came together and they said, hey, like if they're not gonna give us the opportunity to like you know be in like night markets or whatever. We're gonna create our own night market and we're gonna sell to the people who we already know is gonna fuck with it. And yeah. then you know, I mean, I think Jackie got hip to it because of like some TikTok or like IG promo videos. And I'm like, yo, like that's actually a dope thing that people are coming together Mm -hmm. for the cause that they want to grow their businesses and also help other businesses grow at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I don't, I don't know. Like I remember Nico came over to my house the other day for dinner. Um, I don't know. Why were we there? Why did we have family dinner? Oh, I think we were, were, no, we were also, yeah, just because one and two, we were also celebrating my sister-in-law's birthday. Yeah. But while he was there, my mom, she dead ass asked him, she's like, you can be honest. Is there anything that I've cooked that you have not liked? And he's like, no, 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 no. Because we actually, he actually had mole for the first time. And for my Latinos out there, like, you know, that mole is like a Mexican dish originated in Puebla, which were my, one of my grandmas is from. And when I initially sold it to Nico, I was like, yeah, we're going to have like mole. It's like chicken with a chocolate sauce. Like, and then he was just so confused. He's like, yeah, sure. And I was just like, okay, cool. But that's literally how I know how to explain it. Like, and my dad explained it to him and he was just like, yeah, like it takes the, like the real authentic mole, like takes days to prepare. It takes days yeah, uh, I believe your dad said it took like 10 days yeah. for your grandma to prepare. Yeah. So but she prepared it in the right, yeah. quote unquote, right way. Yeah, she she prepared it like the in the Pueblo way. Like she she used chocolate. She used the animal graham crackers where you have to literally roast them for, I think, like a day or two. Let them sit and like it, it's it's crazy. My grandma, I I know I should learn how to do that. And I want to learn how to do it the authentic way. If I like, if I do learn how to do, it, I want to learn how to do it the authentic way rather mm. than buying the store like bought mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because mean, it's just it's better if it's authentic. Yeah, and it's better when you don't buy it off of the you know like <laughs> oh let's get this chocolate syrup from the freaking ninety nine ranch or something <laughs> from the ninety nine ranch over here we using have, like freaking a- Nesquik milk and <laughs> yeah yeah we'll go to El Super. That's like oh yeah man. sorry. Because <laughs> Nico's over here like 99 Ranch. I'm like, yeah. Uh, Look, 99 Ranch, Pacific Super, freaking L. What I just said? L, what soup, you just, L, L Super. Super. Like, it's all basically the same <laughs> shit. They just sell different shit, but it's the same shit. Super A. <laughs> Super A. Oh, my God. So there is actually a Filipino equivalent, so to speak, for like mole. Oh, really? Yeah. And I don't eat it. What? So I kind of, so when you told me like, oh, we're eating like this um chicken with like chocolate, chocolate sauce. sauce i'm just like okay there's only one thing that comes to mind in filipino culture and it's mm-hmm. actually diniguan 
Dina Gowan. So why does that sound so familiar? Yeah. So okay, let me read up the ingredients, and it's kind of the same thing. You just use a different type of meat. So basically, instead of chicken, you're using uh, pork. I so, knew it was gonna be pork. Yeah, I mean Filipinos. I mean we love pork. We eat the, the, but, there's a lot of beef and pork. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot. <laughs> but I mean, I don't really have to read this though. But basically, it's like just pork belly, pork blood. Jalapenos. Pork uh, blood. Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And then like this chocolate sauce. And the thing is too, it's like you can the reason why I don't eat it is because in Filipino culture they are heavy on like using peanuts for it. Oh yeah, and so then, allergic. Yeah, I'm allergic, y'all, to peanuts, so I don't be eating that. So that's why I just stayed away from that when I was younger. And I've just generally stayed away from it. So yeah. actually, when you told me, you, you know, we were eating mole, that was the first thing that came to mind. I was like, is there going to be peanuts? Yeah, you did ask like, me. You're like, is it, is it made with peanuts? I was like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't like, I don't think so. So I really just took the chance on that one. But yeah, no. you took a chance. I took, I took a chance on that one. Babe, there's what like if hella- there was peanuts? In, I could have I literally could have died eating mole. Babe, you're exaggerating a little bit. I could have died. Babe. Babe. He's exaggerating a little bit, guys. There was no peanuts in there. Oh, well, I know there was no peanuts in there. But the fact that you just took a chance. But you're just did like, you oh. die? All right. Exactly. That's the best response I could have given. Estoy muerto. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, he says, uh, estoy muerto to like, you know how that saying is like, I'm dead. That's why, that's why Nico <laughs> says, estoy muerto. He goes, I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, I just can't. I can't with the, the sayings that you say sometimes. In Tagalog, it would be, patay na ako. Patay na ako. Patay okay. na ako. Patay na <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, because so, it's a gala. See, that, that's the thing about this particular phrase, right? Like, if you say, I'm dead in English, it's like, I'm dead, right? You know, I actually have, like, a hella, like, hella phrases on my phone, on my notes, like, in Tagalog. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go over it. But let's uh, let's go over this I'm dead part. The oh, reason yeah. why I like saying estoy muerto is because, like, it's very similar to literally saying I'm dead. I'm dead. Estoy muerto, which is, you know, three syllables, but patay na ako, that's four syllables. And I'm just like, bro, like, I don't want to go through four syllables just to say it. So why don't you start saying like, well, you already do, but you say estoy muerto and I'll say patay na ako. I'll start, I'm, I'm going to start saying that out in public and people are going to think, oh my gosh, she really is Filipino because people already think I'm Filipino oh for whatever God. reason. Yeah, and then if I start saying estoy, estoy muerto, muerto they're everywhere, they're like, oh, he's like hey, what's up, fool? It, okay. <laughs> He just ruined it. He just ruined it. I'm looking for... Okay, I do have a question, though. I do have a question before we get into all that. Oh, I found it. So, my question is... I was so... So, okay, let me let me set this up. So, I was so thrown off when I first moved out here. And people started... <laughs> people started calling me dick. Oh, my God. Okay, Pe- okay. People started calling me dick when I moved out okay, here. Like, oh, what's up, right. dick? And I'm like, what? But like, was, first, was I was like, first like, of all, my dick ain't up. Okay, whoa. <laughs> okay, but it was more, and I will admit this, it was more of like Latino dudes, right? Yeah, it was okay. more Latino dudes. And I was like, what the fuck you but mean, see, what's up, dick? It's so more, that It's more of like the, like the wannabe gangster, like, what's up, dick? Like, that's how they say it, like. So out of all the words that could have been chosen for... <laughs> Hey, what's up, bro? It's like, what's up, dick? I don't know where that came from. All I know is that I went to school with those. F- I was about to say foods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but all I know is that I went to school with people like that. They would literally be done. I was like, hey, dick. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, dog, it's 745 in the morning in a hallway. Why you, Why you got to use language like that? I could just imagine being in the hallway, like a very echoing hallway and be like, Dick, 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 oh my god no and you know what's funny some guys would actually do that like so that way it's louder and you you'd actually hear like the hey dick like <laughs> but, yeah, that, that sounds kind of lit but it's kind of an ex- it, it's those, kind of an excuse to the, say dick but those were like the the guys that like were so fucking annoying it's like they sit in the back of the classroom and they go like a teacher starts to, Hey, miss. I'm like, 
dog. And, and then you already know. Like, you put your head down because you know the next thing that's about to come out of this dude's mouth <laughs> is just something so stupid. <laughs> and then he's in the back of the class. Hey, miss. And she's going to be like, yes, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, I don't got a pencil or no paper. I'm like. Why the fuck did you come to school then, dog? And so that they walk around with no backpack, no notebook, no pencil. So they ask, like, the nice girl next to them, like, hey, you got a, a pencil I could borrow? Yeah. So she borrow, let them borrow a pencil. <laughs> you got some paper? Dog, do you not care about your education? Just don't come to school at this point. Oh, my God. Just for them to funny. leave in, like, third period and leave the rest of the school day. That's fucking funny. That, that was is my, funny. That's my high school. So wait, story. I don't. I, so where, where did the? You never answered the question. Where does the dick come from? I have no idea where the dick comes from. <laughs> Got him! Got him! <laughs> you jerk! As soon as it was like I was saying it, I was like, "Oh shit!" Got him! <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I'm clipping now. No. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, Jackie's gonna go over uh oh my phrases, th- Filipino phrases that she's uh yes. so eloquently written down or not yes. written down, but typed up on her uh iPhone twelve. Yeah, why did you have to like talk about my iPhone twelve? Oh, so so 11, I think I made you? I think I made this list if I'm correct because if yeah okay so well, I made who this else list. made the list? No, like the timestamp. I don't know if it's like the last time I opened it or when I made it. But if this she is said last time I checked. Okay. There was. <laughs> do you have a cricket like thing? Oh no! But you have that. That was a bad joke. Okay. So I made this July twenty eighth, twenty twenty, at one thirteen in the morning. Oh my god! I started this list, so I have added since then. So literally, it's like titled Tagalog. So I have Bahai, which is house. Yeah, Bahai. Uh huh. Buhai, which is my life. Well, not your life, but life in general. Oh. Buhai. Buhai. Bahai Buhai. Bahai Buhai. And then Ako, which means me. Yes. Yes. And then I have <laughs> I have the bad word one. Go ahead. No, I don't want to say it. Because what if your grandparents listen to this? It's This is educational. Okay, so I have Putang Inamo. Why, why are you going to whisper it? Say it with your chest. I have putang inamo. There you go. And then I have basura is the same thing in Spanish. Wait, first first of all, putang inamo basically just means like, fuck you. In your, I have go fuck yourself. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I have go fuck yourself. Yeah, on my so list. if y'all didn't know that, feel free to use that. But be weary when you use that. Yeah, and then um, I have puet, which means butt. Yeah, butt as in like your ass, not like pero like. What? Not like pedal. What a, what does pedal what does pedal mean? But that's doesn't in, it in Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> Dog, no, babe. Wait, really? Yeah. I didn't take Spanish. I took Italian in high school. Pero pero is like but, but as in like, but like not as in but. Like That's B- what I no. said. Oh, I thought you meant actual butt. Never mind. Okay. <sighs> she clear. got these headphones on. She ain't even listening. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> and then I have uh, malake, which means big or heavy. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, it means big. Oh, okay. And I have puki. Which means vagina. Yes. And then I have a knock, which means my child. Tinapai, which is bread. Bread. Um, and then this is what your Filipino moms say when you've just they've had enough of your shit. It's bahal kansa buhay mo. What say that again? I don't know. S- say I, it one more time. No, because are you gonna make fun of me? Did I say it wrong? No. Did I have it typed out? Okay, I'll, okay, I'll say it then. The worst thing you can ever hear from. Your Filipino parents mm-hmm. is bahalaka sabuhay mo. Bahalaka, bu- wait, bahalaka sabuhay mo. Which essentially means do what you want. Do what you want with your life. I don't give a fuck about you anymore. <laughs> so that's what I have on my phone. That's what that. Uh, that's what the fuck that means. Bahal, bahalka, bahalka sabuhay mo. You know how many times I've heard that? Oh God. <laughs> 
Well, someone was clearly the problematic child. That wasn't problematic, but whenever I would want to just make a decision that my mom or dad like told me, and they like disagreed with it, they said "bahala ka Yeah, I'm like whatever. You know what? I would have said the same shit. Um, and then I have nanai tatai. Nanai tatai gusto ko tinapay. That's a whole song. That's a whole song. Oh, what does tanapai mean? Tinapai. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought you said T A instead of T I. Nah, 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 tata. I gusto kong tinapai. Is dad, mom, mom, dad? Do you want bread? (laughs) Mom, dad, I want bread. That's literally the translation. Wow, good job, babe. Good job. Okay, and then okay, let me wrap this up. Ikaw, which means you. Yeah. Gutom kaba, which I remember. I asked you one time. I was like. Gutom kaba, and you looked at me, and you're like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think I might have taught you that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And then, well, you literally taught me like all of these. And then baon, which is leftovers and what mm-hmm. you take home. Um, ka en food and kanen, which is rice. And then, like, I'm doing okay. Like, oxlang. I'm fucking sick. Okay, Oaks long. Lung. Okay, long. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, long. That's why. The thing about Filipinos is that, especially when it comes to English words. Uh huh. Oh, I just hit myself. It's okay. So the thing about Filipinos, especially when it comes to English words, is that we like to just shorten them. Because the same way where I wouldn't want to say, but na ako, it's too much. It takes too much effort for me to say. So instead of saying, Okay, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. It's Oxlang. 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 Yeah. <laughs> like Philippine, we like okay, to short lang. we like to shorten these words because we <laughs> like to say if we don't have to say anything, then you won't. Well, then we won't. <laughs> and that's just me. If I don't have to say shit, I'd rather just not say anything at all. Well, that's true. I mean I get it. I feel it. Yeah. It's like again, it goes back it takes, to like, takes, I don't wanna be social. Yeah. I don't wanna be social. I wanna do something that's gonna take like way less effort, yeah. but a lot more efficient because you get the <laughs> fucking point. Oh, how are you feeling? Oxlang. 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 <laughs> Why do we both do it at the same time? Because <laughs> we're in sync with this. Because yeah. you get it. You freaking yeah. get it. Okay, I do have a joke though. What? What is the ugliest cow? E cow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she got it. Yeah. She got it. See the double entendre? Yes, I do. Yeah. Nice see? job. It. And then the it. last two that I have are. Mahi- mahia, which is shy. Is that how you say it? Yeah, mahia. Mahia. And then... Well, it's more so like hia. Mahia means... Well, when you add like the M-A in uh-huh. front of it, the ma, it, it means like... Mm, I wouldn't even know how to explain it. It's kind of just like a... Oof. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to explain it like verbally. It's kind of like one of those... Sentence enhancers, I get. Well, like, oh, like if shy. I'm shy, like shy is here. If uh-huh. I'm, uh, it's kind of like it is, or like, oh, she's shy type of thing. Yeah, yeah, something like, like oh, that. Oh, she's being shy. Yeah, like that. Something okay. like that. I think I would have to talk to somebody who like really knows Tagalog <laughs> to your mom really break it down. <laughs> your mom. No, but it's kind of difficult to explain what like, like. Anghia sha means the same thing as like mahia sha. It means the same thing, oh, but okay. it's like I don't. I technically don't know the difference between the two, but I know it means the same shit. Okay, so okay, okay, yeah. it makes sense. And then the last one I have is why well, I know it both ways. So you can say angaling or galingaling. Oh God! <laughs> and you only use that when you're referring to like games or when something's really good, like. Kalina. Not not games, but well, more. That's so, what you well, told me. That's why I put well, it on my notes. Well, I put that as like an. Ex- well, clearly it's outdated because that's like what June, June of tw- last year. June, no, July. July of twenty twenty <laughs> or something. No, so like, I didn't uh, know that the <laughs> that the language could change. Sorry, babe. No, because the way I was trying to explain it back then was like, let's say you're playing a video game and like, or let's say you're watching a basketball game and like. Mm-hmm. Let's say Steph Curry made a three pointer. Of course, he makes like, Steph Curry as oh the example. God. Okay, let's. Okay, 
let's say Kobe made a three pointer. Mm-hmm. Is that is that better? <laughs> is that freaking better? Yes. Let's say someone made a three pointer. <laughs> And you're just like, oh, I'm galang. It's like, oh, uh-huh. like, good. Like, yeah. that's so good, uh-huh. basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all, right. all it means. Okay. So let's say, like, um, I, I don't know, like, let's say I was, like, playing Pokemon Unite, or you were playing Pokemon Unite, like and you that. won. I'd be like, oh, I'm galang. Or galang galang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The thing about Filipino language, too, it's like, I don't know why it's a thing to... Repr- repeat words. Okay, I was literally about to say that because I saw this. <laughs> I saw this one video of like, I don't know if it was Random Rich. I don't know if it was Random Rich, but it was somebody. <laughs> they're all like, everybody got that Tito boy that just repeats every verb. It's all like, Oi, Anak, you're dancing, dancing. <laughs> it's like, Oh, why haven't you gone swimming, swimming? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm galing, galing. <laughs> It's just like a, I don't know See, why. You're cultured, babe. Yeah, you are cultured. You are cultured. I think we like to yeah, put. I think I just made Nico proud, low key. Yeah, you definitely did. That yeah. definitely deserves an applause. I think what it is, we like to put emphasis on words <laughs> when it's kind of like when you don't know what else to say. It's just like we're just gonna put emphasis on the word, like fucking hollow, hollow. <laughs> It's like, it's literally like hollow, hollow mixed, mix. you literally could have just called it hollow. hollow. <laughs> like, I don't Instead fucking just, get it. Like, why are we going to put more emphasis on it? Because one mix wasn't enough. You got to mix, mix. Yeah, technically. And, and clearly, like, putting in beans was more than enough. It's like, you don't have to do that to the freaking drink. <laughs> if we take out the beans, is it just hollow? <laughs> oh, that's hollow funny. God. Or oh, that's hollow funny. Can I get a round of applause? Okay, see, I would have given myself a round of applause. But Nico's in charge of the roadcaster. Anyway. Again, they don't care about the roadcast. They don't. They don't care about the roadcast. Why do you keep on saying that? <laughs> Some people care about the roadcaster. Okay, for everybody, we're using a roadcaster. We're using two shorter mics and an A10 Mini Pro. There you go. Jameson, clip that. <laughs> yeah, because I know he's been wanting to know. <laughs> and two Sony cameras for anybody who gives a fuck. And two Manfrotto tripods and two freaking and four lights. Yeah, four lights. Yeah, so. They're freaking blinding, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing because the lights are freaking on. Anyways, um, so we did put something, or Jackie actually uh, made the effort to put something on the Mexipino podcast Instagram story. And she also yes. had the idea to put this question on our individual Instagram stories as well. Mm-hmm. And it was, what topics would you like for us to discuss on the next episode of the Mexipino podcast. And we had a couple of our listeners um, mm-hmm. just ask us some questions or wanted us to go through a couple topics. I think Jackie will go through the first one. Yeah. So the first topic, uh, shout out to Mexipino Meals. Yes. Um, they asked, yes, one of the plus. Uh, they asked, which house has the better party food, Mexican or Filipino? Ooh, that's a great question. Because I've been to both. You've been to both. Yes, I've been to both. Mm. You know what's funny is that we've been talking about food this whole freaking podcast. So I think this is just a food food podcast. Yeah, it's today. more like a food podcast. Okay, because so, we had really good pasta. That's why. Yeah, we did. I think the pasta definitely led into it. Okay, so I think to answer this question, we would really have to break down the general foods. I'm not talking about. Food that your family makes or food that my family makes specifically, because that would kind of be like a little cheating. I think we have to talk about the general like food that we would find at a Filipino party and a Mexican party. Okay. And then that way we can kind of just like slice it down the middle for like generally speaking, this would kind of be the consensus, right? Okay. You know, at least between you us. You know what we should do? We should do like appetizers, entrees, and desserts. And stuff like that. Like, break it down that way. So that way we know. Okay. So let's start with appetizers. Yes. All right. So you first, me first. I'll go first. All right. Go first. Chips and salsa. That's n- normally what we have. Okay. All the time. Um, the salsa that my aunt makes is just so good. Exquisite. Yeah. Exquisite tortilla chips. A tortilla um, Jenny's. No, that's my tia Lucy. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then what else do we have for appetizers? I think that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. yeah I, we yeah. only have like a basic. 
And then we drink while we like. Yeah. We drink a lot while we like wait. Okay, so then this is where I feel like Filipinos win the appetizer round because mm -hmm. lumpia is our appetizer. Oh yeah, you got yeah. You no, know I mean like lumpia. Like I mean, granted, it, I mean you can't really fit it in like a in like any other category. It's literally an appetizer. appetizer. Like for people who don't know, it's basically like an egg roll. Uh, yeah. That a very small egg roll would just like. You can either put meat or you can make it like all veggie. You could put some chicken, some ground beef, and like mm. with this sauce. I don't even know. I think it's like sweet and sour sauce, right? But right. like that would essentially be our appetizer that you could find at generally any Filipino restaurant or any Filipino party. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think you take this round. Right. So I think Filipinos would win the uh appetizer round. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, that's a consensus yeah. between you and me right now. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Okay. As far as like actual food, carne asada. Okay, carne asada. There's a uh, chicken. Like we grill chicken and we like put it in like a barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. Um, you had that the other day too, right? Yeah. You had a little bit of that. And then we have rice. The the. Mexican rice that my mom makes. The orange rice. Yes, the yeah. orange rice. And then what else do we have? We could have, like, are we talking about, like, actual, like, food plates? Because, like, it could go, like, tacos. It could go, like, so many different directions. We have media sometimes. Mm -hmm. We have, what else do we have? Holy shoot. Um, We have ceviche because that's also, like, we have ceviche aguachile. Yeah. We have... um. What else do we have? We have camarones a diabla, which is the spicy shrimp that you've had before at my house. Yeah, yeah. We've had, oh my God. I feel like there's so much that I'm missing. We have pasta salad. My aunt makes a really good pasta salad. Um, is that really like, is that really Mexican though? I don't think that's really Mexican. No. Can't really count. Yeah, you can't really no. count that. And then, well, we have beans. We only, we like, my family really likes the refried beans. We don't like like the, like this. Yeah, the, yeah, I feel it. The bean beans. Okay, so what else do we have? I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot. See, because when I think about like Filipino parties, we have hot links and sausages. There would too. basically be. Oof! There would basically be. Pancet, which is just basically noodles. Mm -hmm. Chicken adobo. Barbecue, and I know, and I know, like barbecue doesn't sound Filipino, but it's the way the way it's made is just completely different. The from same like way as like culture. the chicken with barbecue sauce. It's like yeah, compared it's, to gordonises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fire. Yeah, That's we fire. had that too. Um, tamales. We have tamales. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean. Yeah, I guess chicken just marinated the way Filipinos would make it, but, well, chicken adobo. What else? And then outside of that, we just be getting pizza and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the party goes hella late, that's something our, our families both have in common. We order yeah, pizza because I mean, we finish all the yeah, food. You know, you might, have a, you might have a pig somewhere, you know, but you know what? I think, I think I will say in, like, main course... I want to say that there is more selection on, like, the Mexican side, uh -huh. which would lead me... Because the Filipino food, even though it is, like, super fire, I don't believe there's much selection. Yeah. It's fire, though, but there's not much selection. So I think the way I'm thinking about this is, like... Because I personally like more of the taste of the way the Filip... The way, like, chicken and... Um, beef and all that is like marinated f like of how a Filipino would mm -hmm. but then the fact that like in Mexican culture there's just like so many choices to choose from it's just like man like I don't know this one's kind of tough for me I, I would probably lean more towards like the Mexican side though in this particular argument yeah I mean I agree too because yeah. I mean I, I and it's not to say that I don't like Filipino food I, I don't, and I also don't think I've had enough Filipino food but the thing is, it's just like Filipino. We just, I think we just marinate or like something in the sauce is just like different. I don't know. 
It's because it's all kind of just the same thing. It's just the way like it's marinated and prepared and yeah, yeah. All prepared, it's but really like marinated. if I'm thinking about it, it's like well, shit. The carne asada the other day was hella good. Um, the hot links, the sausages. The hot. I mean, you know, we have hot links and sausages, but we don't have it like how you would like in a taco or something. You know, yeah. like there's just also different ways to eat it. So it's like that's why I would kind of lean more towards mexican main entrees okay you know i would just lean a little bit like a little bit towards that (laughs) i get you yeah okay all right so all right now desserts oh boy i don't think we have i think i'm losing this one i mean you already know how the fuck i feel about hollow hollow yeah no beans but like you have like like ube flan oh we have flan too yeah ube flan we have flan tres leches I don't know why. It's so good. No. And I know I'm going to get shit for this, but I hate tres leches. And you can fight me on that. <laughs> I hate it. It's so watery and soggy. Ugh. No. It's pretty good. No. It's pretty if good. If you like tres leches, I don't trust you. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it's really. I don't like it. I, I guess like okay. That. I guess then I would say if, it's, if it's, you like beans like in your hollow hollow, yes, exactly. Yeah, if you it's like beans like, in your hollow hollow, I don't trust you. Exactly. It's like <laughs> my dad always says, like, "Oh, flan is like phlegm cake to me," and I'm all like, and I'm like, okay, that's Ugh. how that's how I see tres leches. I'm like, Ugh. no, I can't. Phlegm cake. My dad calls flan phlegm cake because he wants to get like under our skin for eating it because he doesn't like how it like the texture of it. Because it feels like you're you're like swallowing phlegm when you cough. I'm like, oh my god. Honestly, I feel like your family just doesn't like cake that's not just like a freaking chocolate cake yeah. like from fucking no, Costco. Like we have oh, and then we have like this like <laughs> Jello thing that has fruit. I don't even know what it's called. I just know it's like a Jello thing that has fruit. And Jello shots. No, <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> no, it's like there's like a. It's like a, it's like Mexican flag colors. It's red, green, and like white. No, oh yeah, yeah. I and know what you're talking like about. And there's like fruit, like on top sometimes, or it's just a Jello. We have that too. It's cool. It's cool. But like other than that, my family just has like cake from Costco, like the chocolate, <laughs> the chocolate. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Mine too. We just be getting like whatever cake from like maybe Portos. A- <laughs> yeah, from like a Portos or a Whole Foods or something like that. Like, yeah. like truthfully, you don't be pulling up to a Filipino party and there'd be like a freaking bowl of like hollow hollow. Like that yeah. just is not a thing. I will say my family does pull up with like conchas as a like dessert. Oh my God, the conchas are fire. Conchas. And all it is is just bread shaped like shell conch shells. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's so fucking good. It's like all of a sudden when you put this bread looking like a conch shell, it just tastes completely different but fucking fire. I've corrupted him. It doesn't make sense, but it's so good. Because it's a concha, babe. It's just... It's a concha. It's so good. It's like they put fucking crack on it or something. It's so good. I ate like three of those, and I'm just like, dude, it's just bread. <laughs> it's just bread. It's just fucking bread, but it's so good. It's prepared. Oh, I my mean, God. Yeah. So I think on, on desserts, we're pretty much even, I think. Just because, like, our families don't really have that many desserts. Okay, let's rephrase the question then. If you were to eat one type of either Filipino food or Mexican food for the rest of your life. Shit. Oh. I don't want to say lumpia because that's basic. But. No, I'm saying generally you can only pick Mexican food or Filipino food for the rest of your life. Mexican food. I'm sorry, babe, but Damn. I'm choosing Mexican food. Damn. <laughs> Honestly, I'm choosing Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did we really expect anything yeah, else? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know something about the, mar- the marination and the celebration I and the dedication. Up, I can't give up carne asada and my mom's Mexican rice. Oh, the man. fuck? No. I can't give up that sotong hon. Oh, my oh, God. I know. Honestly, when I thought you were phrasing it as like, if you could have like one di- Filipino dish and one Mexican dish for the rest of your life. Mm. That's why I was just like, I was about to say sotang hong. Yeah, no, sotang hong. I, I can't give that. You up really at need all. to ask your dad for that recipe because 
we need to make it over here. Vermicelli noodle, chicken broth, uh, chicken, ginger. Hella ginger. Shit ton of ginger. Hollow ginger. Some uh, lemon pepper salt. My mouth is literally salivating. So about is mine. This. Lemon pepper salt or lemon pepper salt. Lemon <laughs> pepper, Jesus Christ, and salt. Um, and I think I got the gist of it. And yeah. a big ass bowl to cook all that uh, shit. I really want Susan yeah. seasick now. And I can't give up seasick. I cannot give that up. Yeah, you uh, honestly, God. <laughs> Yeah, seasick. I don't know. Seasick just takes the win for me in like. In like in, solidifying in the, that you'd have Filipino food. Yeah. It really so does. So you would never have Mexican food ever again. You tried the sizzling seasick <laughs> from freaking so seven, mile. seven Mile. It's fucking fire. I had Seven Mile. The Man. one and only time I've been there. I had sizzling seasick and yeah. it changed my life. Yeah. When I go to the vacant, I get a free plate, please. Yeah, for real, man. <laughs> for real. I've been a customer of y'all for years. You see the SF right oh here. Oh, my God. You feel me? Shouts out to Seven Mile House. Hashtag not an ad or it could be. Shit. Just pay me in some seven seasick. Mile. I'm good. Please pay me in some seasick. We're going to clip this just in text. For seven real. <laughs> um, oh. Was there another question? That was yes. on the... Uh, uh, Quinces versus debuts. And I don't really know, like, if there is, like, a, oh, I prefer this, because I've never been to a debut. Okay, that's fair. So, but we could talk about, like, the differences and similarities in between it. Yeah. Okay, so, quinces versus debuts. <laughs> so sorry. I just remembered the first, like... There was one time where Nico was like talking about quince and he goes, yeah, when she turned 16, I was like, quince means 15. <laughs> I was like, so I don't know where you're getting 16 from. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I don't know. I, I got my, my quince and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway. So a debut in Filipino culture is when a young lady mm -hmm. turns 18, mm -hmm. AKA it is her, uh, her first day as a woman a, as a woman in womanhood yes adulthood so <laughs> what she does is she will basically come in with a court um candles and roses and right? you have a church ceremony Oh, God, yes. You have the church ceremony. Jesus. <laughs> you know, for someone who went to private school his whole life, someone clearly felt some way about a church ceremony. Well, because, I mean, He's like, she just enters adulthood. At the end of the day, she enters adulthood, right? So, church ceremony. She has the freaking, uh, her 18, it's basically her 18th birthday. It'll usually be at a hall. Mm -hmm. And then she has like her, uh, escort, not, not like a freaking prostitute, but like somebody who literally escorts them like through the hall and everything yes. or, you know, through the, that's yeah. what, that's what he or she is called like escort. Oh yeah. I'm just clarifying. No, I know, but I, <laughs> but I know, but I'm just saying because we have a, it's like Chambelan. That's what we call it. Like you have your chambelanes mm. in your damas, I think. I think that's what it's called, damas, and that, and then you have the main chambelan. Oh yeah, see, we just have a court of like what eighteen, does chambelan even mean? eighteen candles and roses, shit like that. So then, oh, you have eighteen people in the court. Eighteen in total, yeah. God damn, that's too many people. Yeah, it's nine and nine, and then the um, the debutante and the escort are twenty in total. Oh hell no! Dog. That's a lot of That's people. That's a lot of people. You know, I didn't have um, a court for my quince. I didn't have a court. Mm -mm. My mom. <laughs> I first off, I didn't want like a court because I just, I don't know. It was like it felt like a little too much. And then my mom also wanted me. She's like, you know, it's your day, and I don't want anybody to take it away from you. She goes, so I, I don't think you should have a court. And plus, like. You have those instances where people bail out. You have to do like a dance. You have to do like a surprise dance. And I wasn't with that. I was not with that. I wasn't about to do a surprise dance. I wasn't about to like awkwardly like dance alone with like <laughs> dudes that I'm probably not going to even talk to in three years. Oh, uh, yeah, that's totally fair. So that, I didn't that is pretty fair. Yeah. So I didn't want I didn't want that. So instead, it was just me. Um and when I came into the hall, 
it was both my parents that came in with me. Oh, lit. Yeah. So I guess it's safe to say that a Dabu and a Quince are literally the exact same thing. Just in Mexican culture, it's like 15. In Filipino culture, it's 18. Yes, exactly. And then there's like little ceremonial things that you can do in the like in the party uh, at the hall. So there's like this. Again, I didn't have this. There's a, some a lot of things I actually didn't have. Um, and that things that I had that aren't really normal in Quince's. So, um, usually you have like a dance with your dad and, and your padrino, which is like your godfather or like the, like, you know, the padrino, the padrino, padrino, sorry. And then, um, that was my uncle Charlie. So, um, I had a dance with my dad. I had a dance with my uncle Charlie. I had a dance with my brother. I had a dance with my uncle Jonathan and I had a dance with my grandpa. So I had, so in in a sense, they were kind of my court, but the longer dances were with my dad, and that it was probably like a minute, maybe. Um, my dad, my uncle Charlie, was kind of cut a little bit short because he has like two left feet sometimes. My brother, him and I, like about a minute. My uncle Jonathan and I were cut like around like 40 seconds, and then my grandpa and I were like at 35 seconds. Mm. Yeah. So they were the only ones that I danced with, like in front of everybody. And we were the sole people on the dance floor. And then usually there's like this moment. I don't know if they have it in debuts, but there's a moment where the quinceanera goes from flats to heels. And she is like on the center of the dance floor sitting down. And I think it's it's her parents that change her shoes from flats to heels. I did not do that. Hmm. That's interesting. Why 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 is that? A I thing? think it's just like a maturity type of thing, like you're coming into adulthood type of thing. So heels equates to adulthood? I'm guessing supposedly, but I didn't do that. I would just wear heels throughout the entire day. Um and then I changed I actually changed into flats because my my feet were tired as shit. That's what I'm saying. Like as far as I know for the amount of debuts that I've been a part of, uh-huh. like there's just no ceremony where it's you know you change from flats to heels yeah i mean and i'm not i'm not dissing or anything i'm just kind of curious as to why um heels would signify adulthood Adulthood. like and it's generally just a question that i have like how does that signify adulthood i don't know i think it's just you know one of those maturity things that like it's seen as like a oh my god she's a woman now type of thing i and like i said my my parents did not want to do that. I did not want to do that. I literally told them. I was like, that's so awkward. No, we're not do, doing that. It does seem kind of awkward. Because everyone's looking at you. Everyone's trying to eat their food too, dog. And all you see is just like a foot just yeah, on screen. Just you know, like, you just see a foot. Personally, I don't like my feet either. So <laughs> I'm just like, I am not changing my heels, and, like my flats into heels. Like, I'm no. Sick. And then there's actually like this thing where this is a really creepy thing. I think it it signifies the doll signifies you as a child and then you, you know, your like your actual self. A doll? Yeah, so there's like do- sometimes people will have dolls that are dressed just like them in the same dress and they have it with them. And like at the quince it's really fucking weird. I I don't like dolls personally. Personally, like I think the porcelain dolls are creepy as shit, and they dress up the dolls in like the same dress, and it's like a, like a mini version of you. So I I'm like that's supposed to signify you as a child, and then now you're like all grown up and womanhood and adulthood, which adulthood fucking sucks. But you know. That's something I did not do that. I straight up told my mom off the bat. These were like my first like strict rules of my quinceanera. I was like, I'm not wearing anything with ruffles. I was like, I <laughs> fucking hate ruffles. So I'm not wearing anything with ruffles. My dress is never, ever, ever going to be red or have any type of animal print on it. Because you'd be surprised. And then I'm not having a doll. I was like, those dolls are creepy as shit. And for what? We're spending money on a doll that I'm not going to even like. I'm probably going to throw away because I think it's haunted. Yeah. I'm, see, the booze are just 
so much more simple. Yeah, see? You just, you just invite the homies to come by. Well, then, like, you in and your that court, too. You and your court just does a dance. Yeah, see? But and, and then, then, y'all, then, then, then y'all just, have, then y'all just eat, then you have maybe the, get drunk. Whoa. Okay. See. Oh, well, I don't know. Depends on which. <laughs> depends on which Mexican family you, you know, got. You know, do the eighteen candles and roses. You call it a day. Yeah. No. And then we have like the dances and the surprise dances. But I didn't do the dances or surprise dances. Like I said, the only dance I did was with my dad, my uncles, and my grandpa and my brother. Yeah. So I feel like there's just hella shit that like in quinceañeras that like you have to do. But at the same time, you don't have to do them if you don't want to. I mean, I just want to understand, like, why. I mean, naturally, my first question is, too, like, is 15 years old the age of adulthood for Mexican culture? Like, is that that what it is? That's the huge thing that I have, like, a then what's the point of it? Like, if you're going to celebrate, and this is me, if you're going to celebrate, a quinceañera and give your daughter or even like if you have a quinceañera for your for your son um if you're gonna celebrate a a quinceañera and you don't allow them or treat them as an adult because we're celebrating adulthood then what the hell is it for is it just for you to spend money like Who's to say that 15 is the age into adulthood? Personally, if it was up to me, I'm still trying to figure out my shit as a 23-year-old, you know? Adulthood sucks. But yeah. it's so it's like, and then it's like, oh, well, once you're 18, you're an adult. Okay, then what did we celebrate my 15th birthday for? Well, that's why, you know, again, not to, like, judge the culture or anything, but it's mm-hmm. like, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, is 15 the age of consent? in mexico like i i don't know that's actually a good question i should look that up yeah look that up that way like i can kind of get at least some sort of answer to this question because at least in the philippines like the age of consent to like drink and all that is as long as you have like your parents consent like you're kind of good but you know i mean generally speaking even in the philippines it's like 18 and uh over here in the United States, it's 18. So celebrating 18 just makes more sense because that's like the legal age in which like you are tried as an adult. Oh God. So Jesus. Well, what did you find? So in Mexico, the age of consent is 15. Um, however, in like the different um, regions of Mexico, it does vary. So, like, I see right here in, like, Michoacan, which is a part of Mexico, the age of consent is 12. So, it changes. Yeah. But as far as, like, it says Mexico 15, but then it'll say, like, different parts of Mexico. And it'll say, like, either 15 or, like, younger ages. So, like, that's my thing. Like, if you're going to... If you're going to celebrate a quinceañera and symbolize this, you're coming into adulthood. And but yet in Mexican culture, it's always, you know, women that are being restricted still up until their 20s. Yeah. You know why? Like, why even celebrate my 15th birthday and why preach? Oh, you're an adult now. You're a woman. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And to kind of just fact check on, you know, what I said earlier, the actual age of consent in the Philippines is 16. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's 16, but we still celebrate 18 18. as like the adulthood, Adulthood. which now makes even more sense because by the time you're 16, you actually go off to college. In the Philippines. In the Philippines, yes. Interesting. Yeah, I think in the Philippines, there's no 7th and 8th grade. So it's like 6th grade and then you jump straight to high school. Really? Yeah. And, and then they call it first year, second year, third year, fourth year, then you're in college. Interesting. Yeah. So if we're if we're kind of like lining everything up, adulthood would essentially be the um college um, mm. you know, you actually going into college. And then I guess like you go to college for a couple of years, come back, you're eighteen, then you celebrate like, okay, now I'm a full fledged adult. I don't know. Something like that. But that's why it's like such a weird concept sometimes. It's a super weird concept. Like how like how do you just like and I'm going off of what you're saying. Like how do you justify 
that. 15 yeah, that, or 18 is... Like, yeah, like 15 or 18. Well, I mean, 18... 18 is just like the general. Like, it's like a general blanket. Like, okay, 18, okay, yeah, you're officially an adult, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about like 15. So, like, when it is like a, a quinceanera and you're justifying, like, my my daughter or my son is having their quinceanera and now mm -hmm. they're officially an adult. But... I mean, as a parent, do you treat them like adults? Like, yeah. you know, like, do they do more adult things? Like, like or what? Like, are they allowed to go and do what, as they please? And yeah. like, if not, then like, okay, then, well. Then, you know, like, what was the point of throwing like a, boy, how, like, how much did y'all spend? Ballpark. Ballpark. I want to say like. 20? 15? No. 10? Mm, I don't want to say it was maybe like five. Five? Okay. Six? So then what was the point I of. Think. Okay. So then what was it the point of more. spending like eight grand? Let's just say eight to 10 grand. What was the point of spending eight to 10 grand celebrating adulthood if you don't treat them like an adult? Exactly. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. No, it, it really doesn't make sense. And I think like now, a lot of the younger generations too, it's kind of dwindling down. Like I know some of my cousins are like, oh, like I'm okay without a quince. I don't really want a quince because. In a sense, like, you know, maybe they don't want, they don't want a party, you know? Maybe they'd rather have something else. Put they, like, I know one of my cousins, she's told my aunt and my uncle, she's like, you know what, honestly, if you guys want to put that money either into college or maybe buy me a car when I do have my license. Yeah. It's like, so it's like that. I, I'm like, that. that's cool. Like, give, get her, a, you know. A, a car that's going to get her from point A to point B. Yeah, which is going to be, I mean, let's be honest, a lot more useful. Yeah. <laughs> because, saying. I mean, ask me where my quinceanera dress is. Yeah. I haven't, I think it's in the garage. Yeah. I mean, you know, granted, I guess for <laughs> argument's sake, it's like, you know, you make the memory of your 15th birthday and or I, your 18th birthday. Yes. You will, I will say that because to get more on the sappy side of it, I, you know, that was the last time I ever danced with my grandpa. I was the last person to ever danced with my grandpa. So I have that memory for life. Yeah. You know, had I not had my quinceanera, I, I wouldn't have had that, you know? Yeah. And so it's just like, you have the memories. Sometimes you do it just for like, you know, for the memories. And it's your day. It's a special day. So it's just like, but there, there's pros and cons to it. There are pros and cons. And there's a lot of questionable... Like, I don't know. Is is it really worth it? You know? Yeah, I mean, just the way I'm thinking. The way I am currently thinking uh -huh. right now is that, like, I think I would rather, I mean, first of all, it just depends on, like, what my child would want, right? Like, do you want to do this or do you not want to do this, right? Yeah, like, exactly. But, I mean, shoot. If, mm -hmm. you're taking, if you're taking, like, eight to ten grand, it's kind of like, bro, like, like, no, and how you know do we, what's how funny? do we how do we use that to like really help <laughs> you? Like that's what I'm trying to say. No, and hypothetically, you know, let's say in the future, like we do have a kid, you know, what happens if like she or he wants both a quinceanera and a debut? We're fucked. I'm gonna be like, like fuck that's, out of here. I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm sorry. You either pick one or you pick uh this money going into a car for you, or we'll get you something <laughs> like that's a lot of money. I don't even want to think about that shit. That's <laughs> all, like, bro, like, here's a fucking car. Like, you'll you'll literally go much farther with the car. <laughs> but like, you want to bring your friends over? Bring your fucking bring, friends bring, over. We'll like, have fucking, a, we'll have a carne asada in the backyard. Yeah. Celebrate fifteen and eighteen, and then you know you go drive off and do your thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of just, like, a reflection of how, like, I like to do shit. It's just, like, I don't want to have, like, a grand fucking, like, literally all my parties, like, growing up, it was just everybody come over, hang out, have fun. You know what I mean? Like, it was never, like, some grand gesture type shit, which, you know, it was cool. My sister had a, my sister actually had a, a debut, and it was cool. It was fun. It was at a hall that we were all familiar with. Like, all the family members were there. It was were good you her main escort? No, she, uh, it was her boyfriend at the time, I believe. I don't, I don't know, somebody, I don't fucking know. But yeah. Were you even a part of the court? No. What the heck? I'm chilling. Really? Yeah. Really? Bit. 
Okay, I'm Mar- asking. Well, Marcel, when it comes to like the Daboos, like li- at least the ones I've been to, it's been just all friends. <laughs> so you're not your sister's no, friend? No, I mean like all like just all like, like my like home- besties. Yeah, and- like my bestie, people I go to high school with, shit like Another that. Another reason I didn't have a court, I didn't have any besties in high school. Everyone hated me. <laughs> and I hated everyone. Well, <laughs> all right. No, I'm just kidding. Not really, but anyway. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I honestly thought you were a part of your sister's court. Uh-uh, I was part of like so many. I was, I, I was probably in like eight different Oh my courts. God. Somebody was besties with everybody. Bestie. <laughs> I was bestie. actually. So I was actually in. Um, my friend Princess had a court. And then, like, literally, maybe, like, a week or so. Oh, like, I like Princess. Yeah. And then maybe, like, a week or so, like, the guy who was supposed to be her uh, her escort, like, backed out. <gasps> Crazy. So that Like, a week before? Yeah, like, a week or two before. <gasps> oh, I would have had a fit. Yeah. So I would have fought him. Yeah. So then she asked me. She was like, hey, like, can you be my escort? And I was like, yeah, I got you, dude. <laughs> like, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, see, I think I that was... That was probably the only time I was ever an escort. <laughs> when you say it like that. Well, that's why I had to clarify in the beginning of this whole <laughs> conversation. Like, I don't mean a fucking prostitute. <laughs> well, I was never I was never a part of quinceañeras. Now I think about it. Oh, for real? Yeah. I, yeah. Mm, yeah, I don't think I was. I have a feeling I was a part of my tia Stephanie's, but like you have a feeling, or you know? Well, because I was young, I don't remember. I just remember my mom getting mad at me that day because uh, I spilled BD on my dress. <laughs> Lit. And um, I think I was—I had something a part of something in my tia Stephanie's quinceanera. I don't know what exactly, but I remember that she would rehearse like in our backyard <laughs> she would rehearse in our backyard for like her dances and her and everything and they brought her in on like a like a lifted thing like the guys brought her in and lifted thing and while they were practicing at my house she actually fell and ate shit oh on like God. the cement at our house and i remember seeing her and i thought it was so funny and it was so funny it was so funny but that's what i remember oh shouts out to your staff yeah you know. Now she's getting married. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, it's been like about an hour right now. I think a really good uh, podcast episode, honestly. Yes, it really has been. I know we've we've been a little MIA, but we're back better mm-hmm. than ever. Mm-hmm. Just trying to figure scheduling things out. So, you know. Yeah, that's all it is, everybody. But We live um, busy lives. Yeah. If you guys have any topics that you want us to go over, feel free to uh, DM us. Mexipino podcast, Nico, a.k.a. Blitz, J underscore Quillen. Or, uh, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you have our numbers, just text us what you want us to talk about. Or leave a comment on the YouTube section. Yeah, that too. Leave it under the clips. Leave it under the actual video. Leave it under whatever. We'll we'll see it. We'll find it and we'll talk about it. Yes, we will see it. Yes. My name is Nico Blitz. My name is Jackie Ramirez. And this is the Mexipino podcast, everybody. Salamat. Bye.